Hello, Periscopers. Give me in just a little later than I had hoped to be. My uh, afternoon schedule changed a little bit. And I'm sharing the Twitter, so thank you for joining. Ah, Felicia, I see you. I missed the first person, but thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. I added it on Twitter. Oh, wow, I think I need some sleep. Look at those. Oh, you got my book today. The book came. I'm so happy. I hope you like it. Enjoy it. Hello, Dr. Tama. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm going to give us a moment for other people to join in. I'm a little bit late. Ah, Adam R. 101001. Thank you for joining. Hi. Dr. Sixella. I think that's it. Thank you for joining today. I appreciate it. Veronica Joy. Thank you. I saw you on Instagram. Very cool. Thank you. Oh, I love the hearts. I feel the hearts. Thank you for joining. I just believe. Thank you for joining us. Feel free to share with um, ah, P. Christine G. Thank you for joining us. Share. If you're on an iPhone, you can swipe uh, left to right and share with your followers or on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, and if you're on an Android, you can swipe from the bottom to the top if you want to share um, our time today and some of what we get to do together and talk about. I am going to get started because my afternoon changed just a little bit. Uh, oh, thank you for inviting your followers. I appreciate it. Hello, Dr. Sixella. <laughs> and so I wanted to chat just a little bit um, and share who I am. My name is Monica A. Coleman, and I am a professor of religion. <laughs> and I'm based in Los Angeles, California, and I am the author of the forthcoming, or it might be in your hands now, book, Bipolar Faith, A Black Woman's Journey with Depression and Faith. And I come on Periscope for just a little bit every afternoon or evening, depending on where you are <laughs> um, geographically, to answer the questions that I get asked the most. And that question, those questions are, what are my spiritual practices and how do I live faithfully with a depressive condition? And so today I realized I had not talked about writing. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about writing, um, which is a little obvious because I'm a writer. Um, but how I think writing is an important spiritual practice. Um, and it's a practice I've had long before I knew it was a spiritual practice, right? Um, so many of us, ah, thank you, I just believe, <laughs> um, journal. And I was a kid who journaled and um, wrote down what I was feeling. And it's this great way, I think, journaling, especially having this unedited process, right, of just getting your feelings out, your ideas out, your thoughts out. Um, and it's a fairly well-known tradition in many religious traditions of writing or journaling, really, as a way um, as a kind of spiritual practice, and that's what so many of us read and are inspired by, whether it's written scriptures or um, people like Rumi and Hadiz and uh, I think Teresa of Avila, you know, whose spiritual writings, which were their reflections, their journals, their poetries, then become meaningful for us and inspire us and encourage us. So there's the kind of writing that you might share that could be an encouragement to somebody else. But I think there's really just this wonderful gift of writing for yourself and writing um, as a way of just expressing yourself. And it's also a nice way of being able to go back in your life and look at the things that you were concerned about, the things that you worried about, things that you rejoiced in, and see where you are now. You know, writing really gives you a chance to have a testimony, right? Because you can say, wow, a year ago, this is where I was and what I worried about, and I'm not there anymore. Like, I may have new worries, but I'm not there anymore. I somehow got through these times that seemed really difficult to get through. And I also wanted to share about writing because um, some people are receiving bipolar faith in the mail. If you pre-order the book, it's coming in. And um, people ask me about writing and my writing process. Hello, Crystal O'Shawn. <laughs> and um, people also uh, ask me, I guess, a couple questions. And one that comes out a lot is, well, was, this, was writing it therapeutic? It was writing not alone therapeutic? Was writing um, bipolar faith therapeutic? Um, did you experience it as liberative or healing? And for me, the answer actually is no, I didn't. I, um, I didn't write the books um, as a part of my own healing process. I actually felt very whole and very free when I wrote both of those books. Um, 
But because I had journaled previously, and you'll see in Bipolar Faith, I actually quote from some journals I had when I was 12 and 13 and 14 years old. I kept all these journals. Um, you know, I use journaling a lot in my writing. But what I find in writing, so if it wasn't this healing experience for me, because I wasn't trying to write my way to wholeness. I do write my way to wholeness, but that stuff is private. I'm not telling y'all all that, right? <laughs> the things that I um, shared in, in Bipolar Faith are... Um, are weren't I I hope that other people experiencing them as healing <laughs> I do but um, it really was a different kind of benefit that I got out of it what it really forced me to do in telling the story of my life and sharing the story of my family's life and those of my friends was I got to really appreciate how many people walked my journey with me uh, I couldn't name all of them which is why the acknowledgments are long <laughs> um, but I realized, wow, this, this, I've never been alone. I've never walked this alone. And that was a really, really amazing and beautiful thing to see if I tried to write it and realize I could not write a hero's story. That it was the story of me and so many other people who helped and who comforted and who, who saved and who shared with me. Um, and that it was my journey is their journey as well. And the other thing is that it really pushed me that, um, and I mentioned this in, in a couple places, an interview that should be coming out, I think, to see that there were no um, good guys or bad guys in my life. <laughs> and when you're living life, I, you're usually pretty clear. At least I am. I'm clear. I'm the good guy. They're the bad guys. Right? I'm doing things right. They're doing things wrong. They, I'm just this poor, innocent person, and they are hurting me. Right? <laughs> and when I decided to write the book, it really pushed me to kind of step back and try to have compassion for each person, even people who I wasn't crazy about, even people who I felt had hurt me, and see the ways in which I had hurt some people, and the ways in which I had failed not only myself, but others around me. And so, um, we're just going to keep moving. And so for me, it was a really great process of relationality, right? And of seeing the heart and the soul that was in everybody. Um, who was involved in my story. And so that's one thing I got out of writing. And I mean, wow, what a spiritual gift is that? What a spiritual gift is it to see that you're not alone? Not just because God was with me, but because other people are with me. And what an amazing spiritual gift to see that, you know, all of us have strengths and all of us have weaknesses. All of us have areas of criticism and all of us have areas of compassion. Um, and that and to really try hard to show people in the most round and in, in way I could and to present people with the most integrity that I could. And so I really wanted to share that today and that I think that writing is a spiritual practice that I think it's a great thing to do for yourself. It's a great thing to do um, for a wider public if you believe you can do that because so much of so many of us grow from writing. We grow from scriptures. We grow from the writing and poetry of other people. And these are the stories and the verses and the wisdom that shape our lives. And so we can shape the lives of others and we can shape our own. So that's what I wanted to share today. I will come back and see you all later uh, next tomorrow around 4.30 Pacific time. As a reminder, my name is Monica A. Coleman. I am a professor of religion based in Los Angeles, California, and I am the author of the book Bipolar Faith, A Black Woman's Journey with Depression and Faith. And for my Southern California people, my California people, um, the book launches this Sunday at Christ Our Redeemer AME Church. Dr. Tama, who's here somewhere, um, <laughs> joining us, is going to be preaching with me and we're going to be talking about mental health and faith and, in Irvine, California. Um, the next weekend, on July 10th, I'm going to be in Oakland. I did not forget you, my Bay Area people. <laughs> and I'll be at Allen Temple Baptist Church. And so you can find out more information and details um, on my website, MonicaAColeman.com. You can also go to BipolarFaith.com. And I, will, I'm, I would love to come to Texas. I'm working on Texas. So if I could just get somewhere in Texas, that would be amazing. Um, and I hope you all pick up the book. You can get it at your local bookseller. You can get it, um, you can get it at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Felicia, where are you? Where are you? I would love to make sure I can get to wherever you are. Um, I see you here every day, so hopefully geographically I can also get to where you are. Um, oh, I don't have plans for Arizona, but Arizona's not far, so 
I'll see what I can do. That would be great. Tucson. You know, not Phoenix. Go to Tucson, right? Okay, I'll see what I can do. Um, but thank you all for joining. If you've enjoyed this, please feel free to share again. Um, use the hashtag BipolarFaith. And I will see you tomorrow. Many blessings.